Hello, and welcome to a new email tool tester video. Today, we are reviewing ConvertKit. Although they're one of the youngest newsletter tools out there, ConvertKit already rakes in over $4 million in revenue per year. Interestingly, they have a public dashboard where you can check how they are doing as a company. They've built their system with professional bloggers and digital marketers in mind. And indeed, thanks to their marketing efforts, they've become well-known in these circles. But is it really that great or just another overhyped service? Let's find out if ConvertKit is the right tool for your business. Compared to the competition, ConvertKit is not exactly cheap and they don't offer a free plan. However, all their tiers include unlimited emails. Now, let's examine ConvertKit's features and see if they justify their relatively high cost. Most of the time, the interface is easy to follow, clean, and just makes sense. But as we'll see in a minute, there are some exceptions to this rule. Here, you can see ConvertKit's dashboard with an overview of your subscribers and the registration forms you've created. The top menu gives you access to different sections, forms and landing pages, email sequences, broadcasts, for one-off campaigns, managing subscribers and automations for autoresponders and triggered messages. Now click on Broadcasts to create your first newsletter. First off, we need to select the sender's email address and choose the campaign's recipients. For example, I only select people interested in podcasts here. ConvertKit makes it really easy to segment your audience. As we'll see later, their tagging system is top-notch. Now it's time to add your content. If you were looking for cutting-edge designs in a newsletter tool packed with visual elements, well, ConvertKit isn't for you. As you can see, the options here are quite limited. You can only add text, lists, links, and images. Don't expect two or three column layouts, video integration, or image grids. At least their templates are responsive. Once you are ready to send, click Next Step. If everything looks as it should, press Send Broadcast and launch your campaign. You'll most likely want to check your campaign's success. For that, ConvertKit provides reports that you can access here. These are easy to understand, but also very basic. For example, you can only check open rates, click rates, and unsubscribes. Other reports, such as social media or e-commerce conversions, aren't available. And you can't even see the bounce rate. However, a nice little feature is that you can resend the same campaign to users who didn't open simply by clicking this button. Creating a basic form is easy enough, but be aware there aren't many templates to choose from. Still, you can change the color scheme to match the one on your website. Adding content is as easy as it gets. Click on the element and change the text. However, if you want to add extra fields, things start to go south. In a nutshell, you'll have to mess around with the HTML code. A pretty painful way to handle this. One nice extra is that ConvertKit lets you create a landing page to collect subscribers. Not bad, huh? The email automations let you add rules to trigger actions based on certain events. In plain English, you can change your email sequence depending on what the user does. For example, you can tag the user as interested by a product if they click a campaign link. This lets you refine future communications with this particular user. The downside here is that ConvertKit does not make the process really visual. As you can see, after adding a couple of rules, managing them can become tricky. Let's do a quick recap and check ConvertKit's main pros and cons. On the bright side, Having a landing page editor is a useful add-on, especially if you don't have your own website. Managing subscribers is both flexible and powerful, and their tagging system will allow you to segment your audience. We have to say that their support has also been very helpful and friendly. On the not-so-bright side, for what it is, ConvertKit is quite pricey, and there's not even a free trial. They should also add more design options because creating a modern-looking visual newsletter is only possible through coding. The reports are very basic, not even including the number of bounced messages. And last but not least, adding new fields to registration forms is way too complicated. 
To be fair, they are a newcomer, so we expect them to improve their system in the future. But for now, we think there are more cost-efficient newsletter services such as MailerLite or GetResponse. We hope that you enjoyed our video. If so, feel free to give us a like. And if you have any questions about ConvertKit, just leave us a comment below.